12 years jail for former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak, who has been found guilty of all seven charges in the first one MDB trial. And he's also fined 49 million US dollars. The case has been seen as a test of Malaysia's resolve to stamp out corruption. Now, Najib has said that he will appeal the decision. For a closer look, we're joined by Professor James Chin from the University of Tasmania. Professor Chin, thanks for joining us. First up, I want to get your reaction on the, t uh, uh, on the sentencing. Were you surprised? Yes, I think many people were actually quite surprised. The general consensus uh, prior to today's verdict was that the result will be mixed. In other words, he'll be found guilty of some of the charges, but not all the charges. So yes, I think a lot of people are delighted and they're very surprised that he was found guilty of all the seven charges. And James, we've heard earlier from Najib that he intends to appeal the ruling. Uh, what are your thoughts on you know, how successful he could be with that and what impact it could have on future trials? Because he still has many more cases uh, filed against him. Yes, he's currently undergoing to four other trials. So in terms of the appeal, is actually a, quite a standard uh, approach. Uh, when you find guilty, you usually file an appeal in order to get the decision reversed or a review of the case. Uh, the appeal itself will probably take uh, more than a year. Uh, in previous cases, uh, it's sort of a mixed record. Some cases, some politically charged cases were reversed, but some were not. So we have to uh, watch this one carefully. Um, we're not very sure on what grounds they're going to use to, to appeal yet, so it's a bit too early to speculate. But what I can tell you is that uh, many Malaysians are very happy with this. As you know, the 1MDB issue was the key issue that led to the defeat of the Najib administration back in 2018. And many people actually wanted him to be found guilty and sent to jail together with the wife. So this is really the very first step. Uh, but of course, there are a lot of people are also arguing that it's too early to celebrate because he may actually win his appeal. So we just have to sit and wait. Right. So saying that, this is also the first of several graph trials linked to 1MDB scandal. How do you think this will test Malaysia's rule of law? I think um, because of today's uh, verdict, uh, many people will argue that uh, Malaysia's judiciary is probably uh, more independent now. But I would argue that it's really too early to, to suggest that it is uh, independent. Uh, we don't really know because the other trials are ongoing. But what I can say is that uh, he will probably have to recalibrate his defense strategy uh, because the main strategy that he used for this one uh, was that a lot of the uh, items that were done were done behind his back. It was actually uh, done by j Law and some of the other associates. So he was not aware of the maneuverings. Uh, and the judge said very clearly that it was far-fetched and that the judge did not believe uh, this story. So he probably will have to change this strategy because he was probably going to use the same strategy for all the other cases related to 1MDB. Uh, the second issue is, is the donation from so-called Arab sources. Again, uh, that has been his standard answer uh, when it comes to this huge amount of money that went into his personal bank account. Again, the judge is, uh, is very suspicious about this. The judge doesn't believe the story. In fact, if you read the judgment carefully, the judge said that it's quite strange that you receive such a large amount of money and you did not even try to confirm that the money did come from that particular royal source. And secondly, you did not write a thank you note. So again, uh, he really has to uh, relook at all his strategies for the other trials related to 1MDB. Najib is also a key leader of UMNO, a component party that is propping up the current government. Will this verdict have repercussions for UMNO? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, the most direct repercussion, of course, is that uh, this will mean that UMNO will find a much, much harder time trying to rebrand itself. Uh, since 2018, UMNO has been trying to rebrand itself as a reform party, that the party's defeat is actually a blessing in disguise and that the party has learned its lesson. Um, in other words, it's trying to rebrand itself as a clean party going forward. I think a lot of UMNO people were hoping that he will not be found guilty and therefore UMNO can move forward. Now that he's found guilty of all the charges, UMNO will probably have to uh, rethink about what they're going to do with him. 
The latest talk in Kuala Lumpur right now is that AMNO will probably suspend his membership of AMNO or uh, remove him from some sort of position within AMNO. But the problem with Najib is that he's extremely popular among uh, certain sections of the Malay community. Uh, he's very popular on social media. So if you look at the social media profile of all the politicians in Malaysia, including the government and the opposition, he has the largest following. And you can see that there were thousands of people uh, uh, coming to the courthouse today to support him. So he has grassroots support. And AMNO obviously has to take that into account in terms of what they're going to do with him. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us this evening, Professor James Chin from the University of Tasmania.